We will fight back hard. We will mobilize the war machine. And those who will try to bring down our house will see their own houses fall. Let's talk about finance lessons from the sixth episode of Billions based on my work experience at Goldman Sachs in New York City and based on my work experience at the top hedge funds in the world. Now, please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe and stick around because at the end of this video, I'm gonna grade the episode for Wall Street Realism with a buy, hold, or sell rating. Three key topics in this episode that we'll discuss are number one, how the government tries to get Dollar Bill, who is arrested, to cooperate with the government to take down Bobby Axelrod. I wanna put him on the rack and stretch him until he gives us Axe. Topic number two is how the government tries to shut down Axe Capital, and it's astonishing how similar the government's case is to the real life shutdown of hedge fund giant SAC Capital, meaning Stephen Cohen's firm. And topic three, how Bobby declares war on the government and how he rallies his troops at his company by giving an Emmy worthy speech and why presentation skills really helped Warren Buffett and other billionaires to succeed. This company came under attack, but it was an attack on all of us. Yeah. Now, District Attorney uh, Chuck Rhodes finally has something to convict Axe Capital with as portfolio manager Dollar Bill gets caught with insider information. But will Dollar Bill turn on Axe? Give me Axelrod. You know he's crooked and you know he's going down. So you can cooperate and walk out of here free or you can go to jail. So Dollar, Dollar Bill puts on his best poker face and is unemotional as most Wall Street uh, investors are. He then whispers this to Axe's attorney. And he does not recognize your authority. Not accurate. There's no way that Dollar Bill would disrespect the district attorney. And there's also no way Dollar Bill would use Axe's lawyer. He would get his own lawyer as you can never trust somebody else's lawyer. No deal. You just blew up your family for Bobby Axelrod. I'm Kaiser Sozin. Also not accurate, but great writing. Nobody is that loyal on Wall Street. There are hedge funds though, where there's an extreme libertarian corporate culture, where the fund managers think that they're actually above the law, and the corporate culture at these hedge funds are often a lot like a cult. What is it with these guys? What, what is it about the cult of Bobby Axelrod that makes them wanna immolate themselves? Now, the genius of this episode is that these lawyers on different teams feel really comfortable having a confidential argument or conversation in a washroom. And I've had friends that worked at hedge fund giant Bridgewater, where they know that literally every single conversation they have is recorded at Bridgewater, except for in the bathrooms. And this creates a cult-like culture where you can't be yourself. And separately, to be intellectually honest, you have to wonder if there's envy from the government officials in these cases. The whole city puts your boy on a pedestal, but he doesn't, he doesn't make anything, he doesn't do anything. He's nothing but a filthy money pig. Strong words, eh? Now, the rich dude seems to always be the criminal in TV shows and movies per these examples here. Yes, Bobby Axelrod is a criminal, but many billionaires actually don't see it that way. When did it become a crime to succeed in this country? America used to salute the guy in the limousine. They wanted to be the guy in the limousine. They still want to, but now they throw eggs at it. Let's move on to topic two of three, which is the obvious similarities between Axe Capital and Steve Cohen's SAC Capital hedge fund which was shut down by the government. Liquidate 2% of the fund immediately. That's our worth just 300 million. Now, if 2% of Axe Capital is 300 million, then we can calculate that Axe manages $15 billion, which is the exact size of SAC Capital when the government went after it. And as you can see here, Axe is planning on selling with the government by paying the government a $1.9 billion fine, which is really close to the $1.8 billion fine that the government asked SAC Capital for when it shut down. I just don't want Axe to walk away with a fine and a family office. Accurate. When the government goes after a crooked hedge fund, quite often they pay a fine and they have to convert to what is called a family office, which is also what happened to SAC Capital. And family office means you can't take outside money and you can only manage your own money, which is a big demotion and it's humiliating for a lot of billionaires. We're gonna bleed out. We'll be a family office by the end of the year by SEC mandate or not. Accurate. 
Bobby's sidekick Wags is referring to the fact that where there's smoke, there's fire. Because regardless of what happens with the lawsuit, investors are going to redeem billions of dollars, which is also what happened to SAC Capital before the government settled, as SAC Capital got a $1.7 billion redemption from a Citibank subsidiary because of the government lawsuit. How many billions are out the door at the first redemption? You should gate the whole damn fund. So what WAGS means when he says gate the fund is that top hedge funds, when you sign the investment documents, they have so much power or clout with investors that in that investment offering document, they stipulate that they can put up the gates, stopping investors from redeeming for at least one year. And this is exactly what happened with the largest hedge funds in the world uh, in the fall of 2008, when many of them were down over 50%. So what they did was they put up the gates and didn't let investors redeem. And had they not done that, they would definitely have gone belly up. And a few years after, these funds that were down 50% or more in 2008, they actually broke even and removed the gates. And they got above their high watermark. And what that means is, this, is if a hedge fund is down one year, they cannot charge the 20% performance fee until they break even, meaning until they get back above their high watermark. We know how Axelrod's operation works. He keeps himself insulated. Accurate. Steve Cohen from SAC never went to jail, but his employees did. And the Department of Justice often releases a chest pounding press release like the one you see here when the jail sentence is announced. And notice that we see in this press release that it was issued by the Southern District of New York where Chuck Rhodes also works. And in the five years before the government tried to shut down SAC in 2013, no emails sent to Steve Cohen or sent by Steve Cohen were, were, were read first uh, by a lawyer on his team. And all the dirty work gets done by his pawns, meaning his employees, so he is protected in his moat, so to speak. And this show is so well researched that even the Axe Capital office in Connecticut is very similar to Steve Cohen's old SAC office in Connecticut. And I once interviewed at SAC in Connecticut in 2003, and I had to walk through sharks cut up in glass in the lobby to get in. And during the interview, they tried to get me to tell them what the, comp what the competing hedge fund I worked for owned. And it really felt unethical. And Steve Cohen sat in the middle of the trading floor with many cameras pointing at him. And those cameras were for him to talk to his position traders all over the world. For example, he would look at the camera for the Japanese equity trader and say, buy me a thousand shares of Donkey Kong to represent Nintendo. And when I left the interview, I saw so many young traders getting into Ferraris and Lamborghinis in the SAC parking lot. Now, in this next scene, we find out how hard it is for Chuck to want to go after Axe for political reasons as he talks with a senior politician right here. I speak for everyone. It's fundraising season. The administration needs Wall Street money to compete. Nobody wants us to look like some kind of crusade. I'm doing my job. Accurate. Many of the top donors to political campaigns are hedge fund billionaires, which is why for many years before the Obama administration, the government only went after the sell side firms and not the hedge fund buy side firms. We'll petition for reinstatement after Rhodes leaves. After the White House turns over, we'll get it. You'll be managing outside money again within five years. Accurate. The Trump administration fired top prosecutor Preet Bharara who Chuck Rhodes' character is partially based on. And then by 2018, two years after this episode was filmed, Steve Cohen returned to managing, managing other people's money with his firm, and his firm is called Point72, which has more than $30 billion in assets. So it's not a lifetime ban on running money if a new government is elected. So how powerful are some of these crooked billionaires? He runs more money than the GDP of a European nation. He's untouchable. Now, at the last second, when Axe is about to sign the government document and pay the government the $1.9 billion fine, this happens. I love that scene, but there's no way he would write a check for $1.9 billion. They would wire the money instead. Let's move on now to topic three of three where Bobby uses his public speaking skills to rally his trips. This company came under attack by an unscrupulous adversary. 
Now, the best entrepreneurs, CEOs, and even billionaire money managers are often incredible public speakers. They know how to motivate their employees. And it's not just what they say, but how they say it. And as Maya Angelou once said, people might not remember what you said, but they'll never forget the way you made them feel. What came next was a war that unleashed the might of America. What came next was a victory that left us as the most powerful nation on earth. And you can learn presentation skills too uh, to take your career to the next level for free. So how do you do it for free? Well, go to meetup.com and enter the city where you live. Then type Toastmasters and attend virtual or in-person Toastmaster events where you can practice your public speaking skills. Or what you can do is you can go to utily.ai and use artificial intelligence for free to help you present better. And for more details on utily.ai, please see the link in the description of this interview that, uh, for a, a, on a video that I gave with the CEO of Utily at my house. And this video is not sponsored by anybody. Now, Warren Buffett says that the main reason that he is successful is because he learned public speaking skills early in, in his career. In fact, Warren Buffett and I have only two things in common. We both took the Dale Carnegie public speaking course when we were 19, and we both graduated uh, from Columbia University with a master's uh, in business. And that's all we have in common though, as he's uber wealthy. Now, Buffett does not have his Columbia degree on his wall. He actually has his certificate of completion from the Dale Carnegie public speaking course on his wall, and he credits this with his success. And you never get confused after watching a Warren Buffett interview. He can present much better than Bobby Axelrod can. And Buffett says things that we all understand, like the New York Stock Exchange is the only store in the world where consumers sell stuff when it goes on sale. And you can't raise billions of dollars without being a great public speaker. So I recommend paying to take the Dale Carnegie public speaking course. Let's talk about grading for this episode for Wall Street Realism with a buy, hold, or sell rating. The episode did a superb job at explaining the government investigation of Axe Capital by thoroughly researching the shutdown of SAC and by forecasting that even if Axe Capital became a family office, with a new government administration, Axe might be able to run outside money again, which is exactly what happened with SAC Capital. As a result, I'm gonna give this episode a buy rating. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon in our next reaction video when we react to episode seven. Thank you.